Thank you for that, Dimitri. That was great for all of us to see. Our next speaker is Sid Schneid. He's a member of the, what do we call it, the International, no, the National Steering Committee for Independent Jewish Voices. Um, many of you probably know him from other activities that he's engaged in. I think I first met Sid at the um, Labor Economist Forum many years ago. But I do recall one time encountering Sid at a demonstration. It was a silent vigil in front of a synagogue on Oak Street that was hosting yet another um, militaristic visitor from Israel. And so a number of us were gathered out on the sidewalk with our candles. I had to bring my children. I was a single mummy, so I had a three and four year old. And and I spotted Sid, so I waved him over and, and I said, this is Sid Schneid. And my son Chet said, he was four, says, oh, the legendary Sid Schneid. <laughs> and indeed he is. And so I don't think he needs any further um, introduction. His reputation precedes him. And I'll just turn it over to Sid. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Unfortunately, the legendary Sid Schneid's not available tonight, so you have to settle for me. Uh, I'd like to pick up on some of the things that Dimitri said and just make a couple of comments. It'll be, my presentation will be a lot shorter than his because I'd like to leave some time for questions, answers, and discussions. I went on an IJV-sponsored solidarity tour to Palestine in 2010, and just as Gideon Levy describes, it is a life-changing experience to see Hebron. It's the most horrible thing I have ever encountered. I felt like I was strangling there and I wasn't the target of the atrocities that were taking place there. To set the scene for you, Hebron is where Brooklyn Jewish Orthodox settler Baruch Goldstein murdered 29 Muslim worshipers in the mosque there. There is a local statue in honor of Baruch Goldstein in Hebron. There is graffiti on the walls of Hebron that reads, Arabs to the gas chambers. This is not whited out by the Israel occupation forces. This is a situation created and enforced and supported by the Israel occupation forces. 100,000 Palestinians resident in Hebron have been displaced and uh, to make way for 400 Jewish settler families in Hebron. Dimitri was a little polite in his description of the situation on the street in Hebron. The people there had a, a very uh, vital and vibrant street life in their shops and everything that has been severely disrupted, in many ways destroyed. They've had to put screens across some of the streets because the settlers who have taken over their homes overseeing the streets cast excrement and urine upon them in the street. You, you cannot make this up. And it is enforced by Israel, Israeli military patrols that go through about every 15 minutes. I don't know if you're familiar with the situation in Northern Ireland where there would be packs of six British soldiers back to back, three facing one way, three facing the other, and they go through, Israeli soldiers, the uh, IDF soldiers, go through the Palestinian quarter like that every 15 minutes with guns pointing in all directions. There's surveillance cameras atop the, the streets. The entire blocks are, are shut off completely. You have to see it to believe it. Desmond Tutu is quoted here, and I agree with everything he said there, but Tutu and others who were played an active role in the South African liberation struggle said that what they've witnessed in Palestine is worse than the plight of blacks under apartheid in South Africa. There's talk of singling out of Israel. This, to me, is one of the most outrageous charges imaginable. Israel enjoys unequaled and unprecedented support from the United States and Canada militarily, in terms of military aid and political support. 
the rest of the international community regularly condemns Israeli actions, for instance, the bombardment of the civilian population in Gaza by a majority of uh, 175 or more to three in the United Nations. And the U.S. can count on Canada in many of those instances and other renowned democracies like Micronesia and places like that. Uh, uh, Dimitri mentioned the, um, the Israeli human rights organization Beit Selim. Beit Selim took an astoundingly courageous act this past week. They went to the UN Security Council and briefed the UN Security Council and they called for sanctions against Israel because of its actions, its continuing actions. Our organization, Independent Jewish Voices, has endorsed the full meal deal when it comes to BDS. Uh, there may be people in the audience who are, feel a little skittish on this or feel that it's going too far. I'd be happy to talk to you about it because if it seems extreme, it only seems so because of the way it's been characterized. I like Barghouti's explanation of it and I've, my invariable experience has been that after talking it out and doing some reading on it, people who have a gut core commitment to human rights in general invariably support BDS. Uh, there is a religious Jewish leader known as Hillel the Elder. I'm not a religious Jew. I don't often quote religious Jewish figures, but he is known for making two statements. First, if I'm not for myself, who is for me and being for myself, uh, only for myself, what am I? and if not now, when? Second, that which is hateful to you, do not do to your fellow. That is the whole Torah. The rest is explanation. I think these are good things to keep in mind when we're talking about Israel and Palestine and when we see the kind of crimes that are committed there on a regular basis. The overwhelmingly dominant view in the Canadian political class is that it's not worth the expenditure of political capital to address the Palestinian cause. But the folks in the Green Party, Lisa and Dimitri and uh, a bunch of other good, strong, uh, ethical people sponsored, promoted, and ultimately got their version of the uh, BDS resolution passed. And in my view, they exhibited tremendous political courage and integrity. And to paraphrase Hillel, if not the Green Party, who? Finally, I'd like to end by quoting one of the most famous lyrics of all time, my apologies for its gender insensitivity. How many years can some people exist before they're allowed to be free? How many times can a man turn his head pretending he just doesn't see? We all see the reality in Israel-Palestine. The question is what we're gonna do about it. Thank you. We're going to wrap up with a bit of a bookend. We get Audrey Siegel again. And um, after that, we'll have a little bit of time for some questions, answers, comments. Um, and again, thank you all for coming. Thank you for staying. It's wonderful that you came out on this soggy night. And here comes Audrey, and she's going to give us some of her thoughts from the perspective of an Indigenous woman here on our Musqueam lands. I would like to say hi Zepka, um, to you amazing humans for sharing your experience, your truth, for connecting dots, for opening doors, for opening hearts and minds, um, giving people a good way to go. As my dad said, he said, you always have to give good people a way to go. And I said, but some people just don't deserve to exist in my mind. <laughs> um, it can be extreme sometimes. Um, so what has become clear to me um, connections, parallels, lines of um, division that don't really exist. That we have a lot of parallels in Canada to what happens in our, on our reserves. The over, under, miss, and non-representation of First Nations here on our unceded lands because any treaties that were signed were signed under duress and under the Canadian government's own systems of law shouldn't even be being upheld. 
never mind enforced through such atrocious means, that overall we have this disturbing trend and theme that's been building for generations in really sneaky, subtle ways. And now people are really seeing it. Harper brought it right out to the front. He was the, he was the figurehead for this beast that's been um, building for so long. Who is allowed to stand up and speak the truth? Who is allowed to protect? Who is allowed to protect their land, their culture, their rights, their lives, their future, their ancestors, their sacred sites? In Canada, the creation of the military, of the RCMP, of the police, was to quell the uh, uproarious First Nations, the um, Indians who just wouldn't settle down or die. The creation of the police was to enforce the rules and the laws and the standards of the oppressor, completely overpassing our own laws and rights that we lived by I know you've heard me say it a few times, over 16,000 years, we had hyper-effective means of governing ourselves. It wasn't necessarily a code of conduct or protocol, as people call it. It was a way of living. It's basic principles of how to be decent and how to be kind and how to be compassionate and how to not overuse. And it all comes down to these same basic points that start when dollars are prioritized over life. So the dehumanization, the hypersexualization, and the criminalization of being an Indian woman in Canada, we know what that looks like. That looks like murder to missing women. I work with the women who fought for 30 and 40 years to put this at the tables of the government that is benefiting from that ongoing aspect of the genocide. I challenge every person who identifies themselves as Canadian to recognize that unless you are doing everything you can to not just hold the government accountable, but to stop it, you are also accepting those benefits that the Canadian government does off of my women and off of my land. I don't accept that. I used to be passive about it. I used to kind of give a little bit of leeway I work with the families. I'm on those front lines. Um, it's in my family. I've never felt safe. I've always had to know how to defend myself in every way possible. I've had to be faster, I've had to be smarter, I've had to be meaner at times. I watch the children in my family be taken from my nieces who are 20 years younger than I am because my nieces can't stop using alcohol and drugs, and why is that? It's not just looking, it's the same thing when Lisa and I ran for city council, the same, excuse my language, but the same shit I said then was true for six generations before me, and unless I do something, it's gonna be true for countless generations after me. We need to look at the underlying issues here. We need to, instead of allowing these walls that have been erected to continue to stand, we need to knock them down. We need to point out the opportunities and the places for people to step forward, to come into the light, to stand in their own truth, to feel their own power, and to actually connect with each other. We have way more in common than we have dividing us. I recognize the people whose family have been here for generations, who love this land the same way I do. I don't want you to lose what your families have worked so hard for. What I don't accept anymore is that it will come at my expense. Nothing that Canada has will come at my expense anymore. I do what I can every single day to, to not just resist, but another word I've used, to find my way back to thriving. I was so broken for so long, I was so ashamed. I see, I see the pictures of those babies dreaming, believing in peace with what they see going on around them. And I know that as a human being, we each know what suffering is. We each know what oppression is. That means we have a duty to act. Sometimes that means signing letters. Sometimes that means donating money. That means taking whatever actions we can. Lots of the people that I know now, they go, when I'm at rallies, I get singled out. 
by the police, by the private security, by whoever is in authority there, fictitious authority, of course, of the military that they create and hire with the money that they make off of my stolen occupied land and resources, nonetheless, I have friends who stand around me in a circle and don't let them near me, who don't let them get pictures of me, but I still get followed home. All my technology is messed with, and what do I do? This is what I do. Most of the time I'm out there with my drum, freezing my ass off in the cold, singing songs. Songs are prayers, the drum is the heartbeat. But we see, you said in the mosque, how many people were killed. Um, we look at the injustices of it all, the criminalization and murder of those who dare to speak the truth, who stand with all of the other oppressed peoples and unite. What I'm working towards is justice, balance, peace, equality. What, what will not stand in that reality that there is no other option for me is the continued oppression. I don't have another word for it. That's what it comes down to. I don't like what happens and what has happened for 200 years to my people and my land under Canadian rule. I don't like that Justin Trudeau won't meet with me. He says that he represents me. Well, then why don't you stand across from me or sit beside me and show me how it is that you represent me? Why won't he create time for me if he is the leader of this country? Why do I have to go to Oslo, somebody who isn't even from the Muskoma community, and why am I granted an audience with the Cermak um, uh, environmental people, but the Muskoma themselves, the people from King Come Inlet and Alert Bay area with the fish farms, haven't even gotten a single response in 30 years from the company. Why are these companies allowed to come in and set up on our unceded lands to destroy our futures? We know, as has been said here many times, it's not just that uh, the people who say that they're being neutral when they won't take a side what they're not realizing is that neutrality doesn't exist. They're choosing to leave the blinds on. They're choosing to stay asleep. I've never had that option. I've never had the option of closing my eyes and pretending that what happens around me isn't happening. I've been fighting to exist every single day since the moment I was born. I have been fighting to be heard. I have been fighting to, to even like myself. How many other people feel that same way? So it is our job. We have a verb. It, it's, it's a word in my language. It's, 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 it's a lot like Latin verb and noun in, in one. Huaythat, um, to wake oneself up. I didn't exactly wake myself up. I didn't have a choice. My ancestors decided. <laughs> and if anybody else here is familiar with their ancestors, when they decide, it's time to go. So it was time for me to keep moving with all of the work that they weren't able to keep doing. So, so much of what's being said here resonates in my cells, in my DNA, in my heart, and in my mind. My granny always taught me to do good work. You have to have an open heart and an open mind. People have probably heard me say these things over and over. I say them because I understand the tools of the oppressor. Repetition is a powerful tool. I would like for you to repeat that to yourselves as many times as possible until that little seed germinates and grows in you. That to do good work, you have to have an open heart and an open mind. And when somebody is doing good work, everybody benefits. People say that's not possible. No, it's not possible in this system that we're in now. The system that doesn't represent who I am, doesn't represent who you are, who does it represent? It represents the people who benefit from it, the ancestors of the people who create it. The an the, these people who are benefiting from it now are the descendants of the people who created it. The people who are suffering under it are the descendants of the people who it was intended to cause the suffering for. The system is not broken. It's doing exactly what it's supposed to be doing to exactly who it's supposed to be doing it to and for. I have no misgivings about religion, the way it has been bastardized, about government, about politics, they're all tools. 
We have the same arsenal of tools available to us. We need warriors on every front. We need, we need lawyers, we need doctors. We need the actual warriors who are gonna go to the front lines at Standing Rock. What we allow to happen anywhere else, it's gonna surely happen to us. Who stood up and protected my people 500 years ago? Now it's happening to everybody. People are having their land taken. They're saying, well, this is an easement for the railway. We're, this, we're, gonna, we're gonna expand this. We're gonna develop that. And people are saying, my family's been here for 50 years. Okay, uh, everybody pause for a second. If that's how a person feels after being here for 50 years or a couple generations, imagine what it feels like knowing that this land holds your DNA. So when we look at situation like, situations like what's happening in Palestine, we also have to connect it back to where we are. When we stand up to injustices here, we empower other people around the world to stand up themselves in their lands. I don't think I'll ever be able to get to Palestine but I can surely do something here that will improve the life of everybody around the world. People say that those are big hopes and pipe dreams and it's pretty talk. No, it's not. I do the work. I do the work every day. It's all I do. This is what my life is now. And why is that? It's because what I started saying, I have a duty as a human being. I have a duty as a human being who understands what suffering and abuse and violations look like. I go to these symposiums and conferences and ministers will call me in uh, for inquiry work. And I sit across the tables from them and they want to make nice and they want to be polite and have these friendly conversations. No, I don't have time for that anymore. Too many people are dying on their watch. We're finding them in the alleys. We're, we're the ones going in and consoling the families. I know what it's like to hold somebody's broken heart in my hands to have to deal with their children, to have to look at their parents. I have put my feet on that highway of tears. I've, <laughs> I'm a tough person and that broke me. I just thought I was gonna sit down on that highway and sing songs forever and maybe that would bring some peace. But I don't have that option. So when we look at what it is that we can do we have to do just what you were saying, just what um, he was saying. We have to allow those connections to happen. We have to override our fear. We have to let, at some point, faith and trust are going to have to step in and hope. And I think hope is the dirtiest word in the English language. I've been crushed so many times because I dared be hopeful. And yet I stand up and hope. Because what else do I have some days? Nothing if I don't have hope. We have to build bridges and knock down walls. We have to connect the dots between how one thing is connected to another. Aquilini, Eagle Spirit Energy, the Canucks, my Musqueam community, the other two First Nations communities washing their, Aquilini's washing their dirty oil money through the Canucks, living in my community, in my longhouse, in my most sacred space, forcing more forced displacement in the downtown east side, wanting to raise the, um, allowable rent increases from 2.9% to 300%. That's connecting the dots. That's tar sand money that directly contributes to murdered and missing, which is directly connected to my community. Connect these dots for yourselves everywhere you go. That the missing Ayotzinapa, 43 students. Why is that allowed to happen? Why is nothing being done about that? We have a lot of pressing issues we have front lines all over the world and we need people to, to start connecting them because when we are, it's, it's been an effective tactic all throughout humanity, divide and conquer. I'm not gonna be divided. I will not be divided from people who are working on the same goal that I am. I will work beside, I've worked, and this is, it was a hard thing for me to start to learn to work with churches because I see still what it does to my mom what it does to my family, but recognizing that these systems that are in place are still being used to divide. I will not allow myself to be divided. People want to divide the First Nations communities from refugees. We have our own practices. If we didn't accept refugees, Canada wouldn't exist. <laughs> 
So we need to build the bridges. We need to knock down the walls. We need to, we need to recognize that divide and conquer only works when we let it. We need to represent, we need to be smart. We need to use our dollars. Our dollars are one of the most effective tools, even if you don't have many. Use your dollars to represent your voice. That's the only voice these corporations that are going to listen to. I know this because I stand in front of the buildings. I've, I've stormed into the buildings. I have, to, I have to storm City Hall to get a meeting with the mayor who says that he represents my ancestors on my ancestors' land. Yet I'm not allowed to have an audience with him at any point unless I go in in my regalia and my drum and, in, and um, interrupt one of their meetings. I know the importance of, of time and place. We have, to have, we have to have a diversity of tactics. We need to not condemn those who are willing to lock down, those who are willing to stand the front lines and actually fight the battles because the time is coming. We see it over and over. Look at what's happening to the public and to the media at Standing Rock. People want to believe that what's happening in Palestine can't happen here. It already is. It's been happening to my people for 200 years. Now people are waking up, and I'm not. Some days I have some bitterness that it took people so long, and what it's cost me and my people, the work that I have to do to heal myself, to try to move forward, to still try to have an open mind and an open heart. But more than anything, I'm grateful that I exist to be able to do that, to be an example for other people. I don't ask anyone to do anything that I'm not doing. So when I ask you, do what you can here to protect the rights and safety of so many other people. Let's take the word privilege back. I have a privilege here that I get to be on this land and feel connected to it and have the strength of over 16,000 years of ancestors. Privilege isn't a dirty word. It's been turned into a dirty word, just like warrior has. Stomach sin, I am a warrior. I would have never believed that before, but I know it now. And I know that you're all warriors too. You just have to connect to that, to that ironically, the peaceful place inside of you. You have to recognize that, especially the way we use our dollars, when we are silent in situations, even where people think they're having casual conversations and make jokes about this or that. Don't stay and listen, number one, or correct it. Speak the truth. You don't have to argue with people. I gave up on arguing with people a long time ago. It's not my job to change people's minds through arguing, I can present the truth, I can, ex I, can rep I can represent my experience, and we can make these connections, I connect the dots between my people and what is happening to the people of Palestine. I connect the dots to the gypsies, I connect the dots to the South Africans, I connect the dots to women all over the world. I get Facebook messages regularly from women all around the world sharing their horrific stories of endurance and survival. And they don't want anything other than to let me know that they were inspired by something I did. And I think, holy crap. I, I do have a certain amount of privilege being in Canada. I am safer than a lot of other women around the world. But I am still the least safe person in Canada. So on behalf of of my ancestors who believed in and knew the value of life, of all life, the, the wall stopping that man from getting to his livelihood, to what his people have probably done for generation after generation. This is another way of, this is a form of genocide. We need to recognize the tools of the oppressor and we need to quash them everywhere we go. Personally, I like, to, I like to destroy with light and love and peace, but I recognize I'm still destroying something. But in its place, I have to have something good to put. So what good are you putting out there? What are you challenging today? What are you changing today? Even if it's only in yourself, recognize that you can do amazing things and do them every day. Hitsapka.